Titus, Philemon, and Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2, 14, 15. The Bible says this. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. That means just as us, we are partakers of flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Amen. He, that's Jesus. He, Jesus, also himself likewise took part of the same. So Jesus Christ never gave us something else. He came exactly like us. Amen. With the body, flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Amen. He also himself likewise took part of the same. Why? That through death he might destroy him that had past days, that had the power of death, that is the devil. Hallelujah. So, can you see the Bible says he has destroyed him? Hallelujah. Amen. Who had that means he doesn't have it anymore. Had past days, had hallelujah. See, after the devil. Yeah. Has no power, no power. over death yeah. anymore. anymore. So Jesus says he destroyed him. Hallelujah. Yeah. He destroyed him who had past death. Yes. That means long time ago, before Jesus would die, the devil would kill as he want. Yeah. But not now. He cannot just kill because he wants to. Because he doesn't have the power of death anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. And the reason why Jesus can't defeat him, verse 15, and deliver them, so he only delivers. So if you are born again, you are delivered. Hallelujah. Amen. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So can you see? Because people were afraid of dying, they were in bondage. Hallelujah. Yes. But now you and me, we are delivered. From the bondage of the fear of death. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So you don't have to fear death anymore. Because death has no, has no power by you. Hallelujah. Amen. So what Satan has now is not the power of death. He has the threat of death. He only threaten you. He doesn't have the power of death anymore. He has the threat. You threaten you. What if you die? Just a threat. Shut up. Hallelujah. He cannot kill you anymore. He doesn't have the power to destroy you anymore. But he can threaten you. And he can only threaten those who are ignorant. Hallelujah. He doesn't have the power of death anymore. He has the threat of death. Now, Jesus Christ himself said it in Revelation. Let's turn there. Revelation 1 18. Revelation chapter 1. At the last of the Bible. Revelation 1 18. Last book at the Bible. Yes. Revelation 1 18. Jesus said this. He's talking to John. Look at this. The master himself said it. Revelation 1.18 I am he that lives. So Jesus is your life. Hallelujah. Yes. I am he that lives. Present continuous. And yes. was dead. Past. That means I was dead. Now I'm alive. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Behold, yes. I am alive. Yes. Forevermore. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. And have the keys of hell and death. Praise God. Amen. So Jesus said, I have the keys of hell and death. Wow. That is powerful right there. Say after me, Jesus has the keys of hell and death. Amen. So Satan do not have it anymore. It's no longer in the hand of the devil. It's in the hand of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, since the keys are with Jesus, now Jesus is no longer using them. He has given you to use them. He obtained them, but not for him. He doesn't need them. Hallelujah. He says, I have the keys of hell and I'm dead. And he says, hey, it's no longer me that need them. You are the one who did. I give these keys unto 
you. Hallelujah. Say, I have the keys. So Jesus is no longer using the keys. They are yours to use because he doesn't need them. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Now, I'm going to show you tonight something very powerful. So these keys are no longer with Jesus. He has placed them in the hand of believers. Yes. So the day you receive Jesus, the keys are coming to your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Say after me, I have the keys. I have the keys. So the knowing that Jesus has them, you have them. Look at Matthew 16. Matthew 16, 19. We are laying the foundation. Matthew 16, 19. Jesus has the keys, but he gave them to us. Matthew 16, 19. Matthew 16, 19. Bible says 19. Matthew 16, verse 19. Jesus said, And, did you remember now? And, I will give unto you the keys. The one he talked about in the book of Revelation. Now can you see? So Lord, for Jesus, I will give you unto you the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I will give unto you the keys. The keys. The keys. So the Lord of Jesus. The keys are with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now look at this. What are the keys? Now he give you what keys. What are these keys? He give you the keys. Look at this. And whatever you shall find on earth shall be found in heaven. Hallelujah. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in, in heaven. That means the keys Jesus talked about are the keys of binding and losing. These are the keys. Binding and losing are the keys he has given us. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever we don't like, we are the one who command it. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever we don't want to see, we command it out of our lives. Hallelujah. Because he says, I'll give you the keys. What are the keys? Binding and losing. So we are binders and we are losers. Hallelujah. Amen. We lose things and we bind things. Amen. What we don't want, we bind. Yes. What we want, we lose. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus won't do that for you. You are the one to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. So the keys is binding and losing. Amen. Now, how do you do the binding and losing? You do it through the mouth. So Jesus is saying, your mouth is the key of giving. Because you don't bind without your mouth. You don't lose without your mouth. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, your mouth is now the key that lock. And your mouth is the key that opens. Hallelujah. Say my mouth is the key. Say my mouth is the lock. So you lock and you open with your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the key now is the mouth. <laughs> That's why now in Proverbs 18 21, it says this. I'll quote it just write it down. Proverbs 18 21, it says this life and death are in the power of your tongue. So can you see? Jesus call your tongue power. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, my tongue is power. So you kill yourself or you are going to give yourself life by your ways. You live long by your ways. You live short by your ways. Hallelujah. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And the day that done it shall eat the fruit thereof. So whatever you have on your mouth, you eat it. If you love wrong life, you're going to eat wrong life. Hallelujah. Amen. So everything you say on your tongue, you are going to eat it. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So the best way to wrong life is your tongue. The best way to wrong life is your tongue. The best way to your miracle is your tongue. Hallelujah. The best way to every benefit of God is your tongue. Your mouth. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I want you to notice. Death 
is your enemy. Death is my enemy and your enemy. We don't have to tolerate it. It's our enemy. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. The Bible says. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So can you see? Death is your enemy. Hallelujah. Say after me, death is my enemy. You don't have to show respect for death. Yes, I feel that he said, let show respect for the dead. You don't do that. Because death is your enemy. Amen. Let's get quiet and respect the dead. You don't do that kind of things. Death is your enemy. You don't respect your enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so the last enemy, of course, Jesus has defeated death already. But the last enemy, when people stop dying, when their bodies stop dying, the death will come. You will not die again. Hallelujah. So death is our enemy. And it's the last enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. That shall be put under. But Jesus has spoken it already. Amen. Praise God. Amen. As a praise God. Amen. Now, since death is your enemy, I want you to see this. Among the things that God has said your enemy shall not resist is your tongue. That means. Since death is your enemy, even death cannot resist your mouth. Hallelujah! Because among the things God says your enemy shall not resist is your mouth. Death is your enemy. And you resist it by your mouth. Hallelujah! Many people, they know that their mouth is powerful. Look at Luke chapter number 21, verse 15. Luke 21, 15, Jesus said this. Luke 21, 15, Jesus said this. For I will give you a mouth. A what? Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why it was quiet. For you to have a mouth. Hallelujah. That's all right. I will give you a mouth. And wisdom, that means ways, hallelujah, which all, all your enemies, adversary, your all, oh, how many? All, oh, how many? All, oh, how many? Oh. Which all your enemies, hallelujah, shall not be able to resist or gain say. Wow, that's my plan there. Your enemies cannot resist you, hallelujah. When you take the word of God and place it on your mouth, your enemy cannot resist you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Jesus said it, which none of your enemies shall be able to resist you. So I can say this, the word of God on your mouth can defeat an enemy. Amen. The word of God on your mouth can defeat an enemy. Hallelujah. Including death. When that death enter your house, you can say, No! Death in the name of Jesus! Not in this house! We rebuke you out of this house! Hallelujah! And as you do that, Jesus said, They shall not resist you! Hallelujah! They shall not resist you! So make sure you use your mouth right. Because with your mouth you resist! Hallelujah! <laughs> say loud and say, I have power!
you are destroying your finances by your talking. Me, I'm broke. You're going to make broke like that. <laughs> when there's no money here, you have to say, money is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. But Pastor Stan, that's how you get miracles. That's how you get miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. When God was surrounded by darkness, the Bible says in Genesis 1, he was moving, it was dark. He didn't say, it is dark. It is dark. It is dark. It would have remained dark. The Lord says, Lord. Replacement. 
Everything he did as substitutionary for me, I, I'm not to do it. He has done for me. But everything he did as an example, heal the sick. I must heal the sick. Hallelujah. Everything he did as an example, you and me can do them. Hallelujah. But whatever he did as a substitute, relax. It's for you to enjoy. Hallelujah. He died at, at age 33 for me to live long. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to show you how long is that what? Long. First of all, we want to say the contradiction of what the, what the people, what many pastors has preached as Bible and not Bible. Though you are going to sit in the Bible, but you must understand. Hallelujah. First of all, some they have preached that seven days or eight years is our standard. No, no, no. We are going to understand why the Bible says seven days or eight. Pay attention carefully. Seven days and eight are not God's standard for his people. But the Bible mentioned, but we are going to see why. Are you being blessed? Amen. Psalms 90, verses 10. Please turn there, I want you to see it. Psalms 90. 90. 90. 90 verses 10. Please, no one should lie to you. The Bible has to be writing to Bible. So don't settle for 70. Don't settle for 80. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to read it. Amen. So Psalms 90, verses 10, the Bible says this. The days of our years are three score years and ten. Three score means history. Three score years and ten. That means seventy. And if by reason of strength or health they may be four score years. That means eighty. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. So here the Bible says now, now, now go back to your Bible on top of the Bible. On top of the Bible where the Psalm 91 starts on top. They're going to see what is written there. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Did you see that? Yes. A prayer of what? Moses, the man of God. That's on top. If you go down, just up there. Just scroll up. They're going to see. It, it's written from the beginning of Psalm 91. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. On top. Just go back. Okay. That, that. You show that the prayer of Moses, the man of God. Also. So, number one, you can see that this is not for us. This we are going to be to. This is for those that were disobedient in the wilderness. And remember, the Lord told them to say, the, those from the age of 20 and above, you remember that? Those from the age of 20 and above, you shall not see Canaan. Remember, I told you that. And they spent 40 years where? In the wilderness. Now imagine, those who were 30, they were just 30. Those who were 80, they died what? In between that rain. So he was talking to them, to those who were disobedient, who were in the wilderness, the Israelites, not for us. So age 70 and age 80 is not for us. It's for those, the Israelites, who were disobedient in the time of Moses in the wilderness. Hallelujah. So don't receive 70 and 8 as yours. Because God never said so. It's Moses is praying. Because God told him to say, if you are going to find out in Exodus, God told Moses to say, Every, our numbers, everybody that was of the age of 20 and above, they shall not enter Canaan. And remember, they spent that many years? 40 in the desert. So those who are 20, some died at 60. Those who are 30, some died at 70. That's why he mentioned 70, in between 70 and 80. Praise God. 
Do you see that? So, age 70 and age 80 is not for us. It's for the Israelites that were disobedient in the wilderness. And God said, from 20 and above, they shall not enter. So, it's not for us. But anyway, even if you got a slave, you've done well some other people. You've done well some other people. You've done well some other people. Hallelujah. Because I'm the guy young. Even if you die at 70, 80, anyway, you've done well. At least you've done something well. But no, 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 don't settle for this. You, 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 you must pep up yourself. Hallelujah. And go for the best of God in the name of Jesus. What is the best of God? So 70, 80 is not yours. Don't settle for it. We want to see the standard of God, how long we have to live on the earth. Yes, Genesis 16. Let's oh, okay. Let's start. That is from the mouth of the Father God himself. Amen. That's what you must follow. That's, that's, God, that's God himself saying how old a person is supposed to live. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord give us the exact Number of years we can spend on here. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Amen. Just come and see. Brother, two. Yes. Genesis 6 and verse 3. Look at this. Are we there? Amen. Genesis 6, verse 3. The Bible says this. I have to see it. Look at this. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. How many years? How many years? How many years? So, how long does that want to live? That's the standard of God. Say, 120. Say, 120. Now, this is the standard of God. How many years? How many years? So if you are 60, should, 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 should you allow the devil to give you? No. If you are 50, should you allow the devil to give you? No. I don't care what you are sick of, God will heal you. Hallelujah! Amen. I said, God will heal you. Hallelujah! Because our God is a healer. Amen. I said, He's a healer. Amen. Oh yes, He will heal you. Yes. You will. Because 120 years is the standard of God. Are you getting there? Amen. Are you getting there? Amen. How long does God want you to live? Amen. Did you see it in the Bible? Amen. Is it there? Yes. Did God say it? Yes. Does he lie? No. no. The Bible says in Numbers 23 19, it's not a man to lie, Amen. not the son of man to repent. Amen. If God says it, he's only looking for someone to believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. Only looking for a lady to believe it, a man to believe it. Hallelujah. How long does God want you to do on the earth? How long? But many people sat down and skilled them before their time. Not because God wanted them to die, because in this issue there is your cooperation. There is your part and it's God's part. So if you don't know how to do your part, like right, that's what I'll be, I'll be giving you to do your part. When you do your part, you're gonna leave 120. God will ensure that you have it. So God is not a problem. God is going to respond to us when we do right. Hallelujah! Amen. If you do right, God does right. Amen. So Joshua, I say that in this issue of living long, it's not up to God or not. Amen. So we need to know the word of God so that we can defend our, our longevity. Hallelujah! Amen. One twenty. How many years? How many years? So listen, I'm going to tell you this. Set your faith on 120. Amen. Now listen, you've got to remind yourself, read this verse every day. When you wake up in the morning, go to the place, read it louder yourself, 10 times. Again, go there. On a daily basis, put this verse on your receipt, your basis, until it enters you. Hallelujah. Amen. It must enter to the place where it begins to control you like you are drunk. 120. 120. Hallelujah. It must control you internally. Amen. Control your speech. Amen. It must 
control it inside and outside. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, when somebody has, has taken some, some wine, it's the one that control them. Mm. This place must control you. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, Amen. praise God. Amen. I said, praise God. Amen. So read it and read it and read it and read it and read it. To why? So that spread down my heart. Hear me. Read, uh, read it every day to yourself, even five times before you go to it. Read it and again tomorrow. Read it and there will be a time to enter you. Boom! And I'm telling you, pray for 120 is going to hit you. Hallelujah! That's how you get your faith. So today you've heard it once. Now go home yourself. Feed yourself. Feed your heart with 120. Let your heart hear 120. Let your mind hear 120. Hallelujah! And then your body will begin to behave 120. In the name of Jesus. God is tweaking your DNA. My DNA has got issues. I'm telling you, there's the one who made your DNA, he can tweak it. Hallelujah! Amen. God can heal you while you are walking. And, and you, you, you don't need to feel that he touched you. God can heal you while you are walking. Hallelujah! Amen. God can heal you while you are on the toilet going number two. God can heal you there, right there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a healer. So he can heal you anyway. He can heal you at the swimming pool. Hallelujah. Amen. He can heal you at in a tax. God can heal you anywhere. Some of can talk. Hallelujah. So the standard of God is 100 watts. 20. And you can see the man who received. Revelation Moses is one over Genesis. Yeah, yeah, exactly what? 120. You believed it. You told me 34 7. Moses, the number of Moses was 120. It was 120 years. His eyes were not having any problem. His body was not weak. At 120, he climbed the mountain. God didn't climb the mountain. At 120, I declare strength in the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive strength in the name of Jesus. At 120, a guy was climbing the mountain and to go and see far. So, Moses, Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. Let's read it. So, the Lord gave Moses revelation. Moses believed it. And he died at exactly 120. Thank God, Abraham never had anyone to write it. So Abraham lived above 120. He died at 175. Hallelujah. Abraham never got to read it. Isaac did have, did have got to read it. So Isaac died at 108. Isaac, what is it? Why? What, under the age of five, he lived more above his father. Isaac. Abraham was 75. Jacob died 127. 127 because he was complaining a lot. He was a mama. That's why he died young. One of the elements that will kill young is stress and depression. Amen. Those who catch your life shall be quiet. Jacob was always complaining. No, my, my son, how is he not? He was worried about Joseph. He was always murmuring and complaining. That's why he died young. One person. But his grandfather wanted to find his father wanted to find. I'm, 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 I'm even going ahead of myself. One of the, one of the, the most dangerous enemy to longevity is stress. Amen. Stress can destroy your cells. Stress. Worry can destroy your brain. It can shut off your your tubes and block the flow of blood. It can give you an attack. These are dangerous stuff. That's why Jesus told us, "Don't worry about anything," because He knows that you and me, we were not designed to carry worry. We are too small for worry. Worry can destroy us. That's why God says, cast all your cares on me, because I care for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Cast all your cares on the Lord. Amen. Tell him, Lord, my healing is yours. Thank you, because I'm healed. Hallelujah. And what's God healing in the name of Jesus? Amen. Tell God, Lord, my, my, my finances are coming right. 
and I trust you, Lord. Money is coming. I'm going to count so much money because I'm going to Hallelujah. Amen. When you cast for your cares on the Lord, the Lord takes the cares for you. And then you're going to become stress free and you'll be blessed. So, how long does God want you to live? 100 years. I can't tell you. How long does God want you to live? 120 years. Did you see it in the Bible? Yes. Can you claim it? Yes. Now, there's another category which the Bible calls a child. So, who can die at 100? So, even 100 years is approved by God. I'm about to give you this. And God called that person a child. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah! So you, you are telling yourself, I think I'm going out. Stop talking like that. When God is calling 100 years a child, hallelujah. Do you know that your words are, are, are causing problems to your bodies? Yeah, this is age. We are aging now. What? You are, you are saying, I'm aging, aging, I'm aging, 40, I'm aging, 50. No, 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 relax. And begin to say, hey, some strength is coming. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you know that Abraham at age 90, he went to battle and won war? At age 90, Abraham went for battle. He went for battle for war. For battle. For battle. He went for battle and won five kings and beat them. At age 90, beat five kings with only 318 people. Hallelujah. So you can see that Abraham was full of strength and full of power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me show you Isaiah 65. Verses 20. Isaiah 65, 20. The Bible called the one who died at hundred a child. So I'm gonna give you my Bible estimation. At least the numbers you can play in should be these numbers about estimation. That's why Joshua died at one day. So it's within the proximation. Hallelujah. So play in this number. Believe God for this number. So at least I'll tell you the Bible between 100 and 120 or in between. 19 between 100. Believe God for that area. But if you walk in the perfect will of God, you can touch 120. Like the Lord, the Lord spoke to Copeland. He says this. I want you to live 120 for me. And you can see Copeland at age 85. Look at the way he's so strong. At age 70, he's born to go wrong man. And the Lord told me, you must, you must believe, you must believe. And he began to talk to his body, he began to eat right, and he began to do the exercises, and God healed him and straightened him. Hallelujah! Amen. And the big part was speaking right. And today God has straightened his body. At age 84, he went for pilot school. And he passed. And most of all the pilots, as he says, they retired. But Copeland went at 84 and passed. It's not special. Just believe God. You can also believe God. Hallelujah! Amen. I've made up my mind. Isaiah 65, verses number 20. You know, two areas we are going to be very strong in this church are these areas. Number one, in the area of money. Mm -hmm. Number two, in the area of health. Amen. Because these two things, people are going to end you. Mm -hmm. And that's why Satan wants to broke and seek. You know if you are broke, you can't do the will of God. Amen. And again, if you are sick, yes. you can't do the will of God. Amen. That's why two areas I must teach a lot, you must hear a lot in this church, are in the area of money and the area of health. Full of money, full of health, makes fly. Hallelujah. Amen. And do the work of God. Amen. Isaiah 65. Do you know that some people have died not because sickness have killed them, but because they have not afforded a simple payment at all? 
some diseases, people they died. Oh, we are treatable. They are the man. Hallelujah. That's why poverty can kill you. Too much of poverty will kill you. Poverty is evil. That's why it's, I hate you must hate because of passion. Hallelujah. It's one of the things God hates a lot. Poverty. God hates poverty a lot. It's devilish. Too much poverty will kill you. Oh yes, some people they will not go to the hospital. That would be, the doctor God would have used them to treat you and for him to heal you. Hallelujah. Just because of love of man.
It's a straight field on it. Let it enter you. Let your faith be stronger for long life. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why Jesus said in Mark 9 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Hallelujah. Yeah. To the one who believes. So listen, God is not your problem. Your problem is your faith and my faith. Hallelujah. Yeah. Whatever I believe God will do, whatever you believe God will do. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let us bring out. That's why coming to church like this is how your faith gets built up. Reading your Bible is how your faith comes alive. And when your faith is coming, you can believe God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. I've told you this church, if you want to have faith for finance, you must hear the word of God for finance. Amen. If you want to have faith for healing, hear the word of God for healing. Hallelujah. That's why I'm teaching all kinds of things. Faith for marriage, hear the word of God for marriage. Hallelujah. That's why I'm teaching on marriage every Sunday. Because every area you hear, faith comes. Praise God. Amen. Now, I'm beginning to wind up. But only 30 minutes to finish. You might take it from me. What should I do for me to leave this one? Now, what is my part? What should I do? Someone. Pastor Sam was sleeping alone. 
my spirit doesn't sleep, of course. But an angel of the Lord came appearing in my face. So when you bring me, it's my angel came to me. So somebody saw an evil spirit which took the face of the hand and disappeared. I spoke to them. Oh yes, I don't, I don't disagree. You did. But it was not your answer. Your hand is in heaven or in heaven. So next time when you see that light like this, just rebuke it. But when you, are, when, you, when you sleep, for example, you are sleeping. If your aunt was born again, God can allow you to meet them. They are not dead. In your sleep. If they are born again because they are still alive, you, God can carry you. And you meet them. You talk to them. Because they are still alive. But this issue of saying ancestral spirits, pray to them. Is a Bible. You don't pray to the dead. You pray to God in the name of Jesus. Are, are, are we together? Yes. So are we together? Yes. So when you sleep, you dream. Your aunt, you are with your aunt who has died before, and if you are born again, rejoice. Because they are not dead. So God does allow you to meet and you spoke to them. Like Elijah and Moses, they came. And spoke to Jesus while he was on the earth. That means we don't die. Hallelujah. So, what should I do to live long? I'll be very quick. Number one. Have faith in the word of God concerning long life. Have this is a big one. Because your faith is what will carry you all the way to long life. Say my faith. my faith. So your faith will carry you all the way to long life. All the way, all the way to long life. Your faith. God can only do what you can believe. Listen people. Say with me. God can only do what I can believe. If you can believe it, He can do it. Because faith gives Him access to work in life. Listen, God does not respond to fasting. Fasting is good, but God responds to faith. Amen. That's why some people in Kenya were killed. The pastor told them to fast to meet Jesus. And they died. They were fasting 40 days. The pastor was leading people wrong. They have, cut, they have cut you in prison. These are all pastors. Yeah. And now they found out that he was killing people and removing organs. People are very equal. Because people, people they want fast stuff. No. Be patient with God. Hallelujah. There are people who do all kinds of gimmicks to see churches pass. No. Just go step by step. Step by step. Hallelujah. Amen. Let your faith take you there in the name of Jesus. Amen. So faith in the word of God concerning him. So concerning long life. Have faith in God. It's going to live long. Mark 9, 23, I put it for you. All things are possible to him that believes. How many things? Oh. How many things? Oh. Including your own life. All things are possible to the one who believes. So if you believe that God will give you a job, you get it. God will give it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. You believe God will give you long life, you get it. Hallelujah. Amen. You believe God will heal your body, God will heal you. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter the disease, God will fix you. Amen. He is a fix. But believe. That's all. And faith is simple. I believe I receive it. It is mine. Hallelujah. Amen. And I take it. <laughs> so again, I take it. Amen. So you take your healing in your heart and you confess it and expect it and see God wake a miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. So have faith in long life. And remember, you can't have faith for long life. Until you hear about what? Long life. So we are preaching on long life. Number two. 
What should I do to live long? Number two. Pay attention to wisdom. Pay attention to what? Wisdom. Remember, I told you two weeks ago, I said, it's the last week, I said, many people have died young because of foolish doing. Foolish. There are pastors who have died young because they made themselves like Melchizedek. They sit and receive people like everything. You can die like that. Moses was dying until the father in law told him, Hey, Moses, you are dying. Leave me and put my hand under them alone. Choose people to help you. Hallelujah. Amen. Wisdom. If God is dealing with you to stop eating Coca-Cola or to stop eating, for example, sugar, is dealing with you in your heart, stop for a while. That's wisdom. I told you there was a time God began to deal with me to stop eating bananas. When I ate it, I felt something was not good. I just felt like banana is not good for me right now. God is causing you to know at that time. And I'm telling you when I ate banana, something was happening to my heart. So I just felt like something is wrong. So for a long time, I stopped eating bananas. I paid attention to wisdom. Now when I eat bananas, I'm okay. Hallelujah. Because at that time, my body was reacting to bananas. Hallelujah. Now, maybe what the pastor pay attention to wisdom. For example, there's nothing wrong with drinking if you take moderate, but you see it can kill you for a time, it can destroy your kidneys, it can destroy your liver, it can destroy your blood. You can die young for drinking. Did you get that? That's not being wise. But God loves you that you can die before it. Smoking. It's bad, it can rot, it can rot your, no one's going to pay off for smoking. But it will just destroy your lungs. You die before your time. Amen. 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 Hello? Amen. I just said what I said. No one is going to pay off for smoking. Amen. But it will cut your life short. <laughs> See, I'm going to heaven because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Have you received him? Yes. Yes. Have you received him? Yes. Yes. Let's read that. 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 Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I declare. I declare. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. I confess you. I confess you. As my Lord. As my Lord. As my Savior. As my Savior. Right now. That's the only way to heaven. Good works are going to carry you there. They are going to give you a place in the kingdom. I'll teach about this. Thing. So pay attention to wisdom. Hmm? Amen. When God gives you some wisdom, act on it. For example, it could be sleep long hours. You just know that you need to sleep more long hours. That's God talking to you now. You must sleep some long hours. You are cutting, you are cutting yourself. So it means from today now, switch off your telephone. Your telephone is making too much noise. So it means waking you up, waking you up, waking you up. So, so if God is dealing with you, sleep long. Sleep means sleeping long is required for your body to repair. Hallelujah! So pay attention to wisdom. There was this man of God, whatever you need to finish. He was very, very strong in faith. And he's God has used, has used him to heal people not. He's in the healing ministry. So one day he was confessing. Every time he go to preach, he would sweat and become tired. He confessed, he prayed, nothing was happening. 
But God was dealing with him from here to here. Add salt on food. Ah, uh, salt. Ah, uh, you need to confess the way. That's wisdom. When God is leading you to do something and you are confessing, you don't hear me. Because what is giving you is the answer. You cannot use faith against God. So the wisdom is this. Add salt on your food. That's the wisdom. And it's confessing. And God speaks exactly like a thought. And again, you want to go to the Lord. I cried and confessed. Nothing was happening. And he came up again. Add salt to your food. He said, God, this is you. Took some food and salt it. After two days, bah! no more problem. He was depleted of electrons. I told you, one of my man, my friend, pastor, he called me. He went to the doctor and found his heart was very fast. Restless. He could not breathe. They they did the only thing they found a problem. The doctor said, let's give him some medication. You know? So when he called man of God, I, I feel like I'm dying. The moment he was calling me like this, you don't get your weight. Tell him to buy rocky salt, rocky salt, that stony salt, and let him just put a teaspoon of it in the water and drink. I said, Mama, what are you coming for? Stay here. Go and buy salt right now, you get a man, or whatever shop, rocky salt right now. Ah, we went and bought. First night, second night, that's no problem. It was like the Amen. Amen. God fixed him. Wisdom. So I'm trying to show you how the Lord can fix you by wisdom. And you can live long when you learn to pay attention to the wisdom of God in your heart, the Holy Spirit in you. That's why I'm teaching every Sunday how to hear the voice of God. It could be like this. Take more water these days. God wants to prolong your life. It means you are liking some good water. Hallelujah. So pay attention to what you are getting here. That's God trying to speak to you. That's God protecting you. Also, God can speak through your pastor. Man is talking to you, I'm not listening. And God can come and amplify to your pastor. Hey, get up for him to stop you. And I can call you, hey. Can you put on some apples, please? Don't take some apples these days. Don't ask me how. Why? Just stop taking some apples. <laughs> so this God says something is wrong with the apples. Pay attention. Wisdom. 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 Remember, we are told wisdom is the principal thing. Yes. Get wisdom. That's what all of us we need to learn to hear the voice of God. Are we being blessed? Amen. Yes. Are we being blessed? Amen. When I'm coming to pray for anyone, that is as a problem. I don't just come. I check. Lord, what could be the problem? Why are they in that condition? That's our ability. And then I'll be asking God loud, what is my mind goes inside here? Because God is here in my spirit. My spirit is here. So I take my mind inside. What is I'm asking my mouth? So, Lord, why, why are they in that condition? Why? Why? I want to know why. And once that, it could be just something here. It could be like, tell them, they will leave. And that's the answer. So I'll just come and say, sister, you will leave. I'm just saying on this behalf. That way you will leave. Came with power. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't heal them. I don't heal them. But I just came and spoke the wisdom of God. Which came from him. The same way God wants to use you. Hallelujah. Amen. To heal people. Hallelujah. Amen. When I had a, a problem with my leg, I didn't hear a voice. It came up from here to here. Stop wearing shoes, buy sneakers. No one knew why I was, I was wearing sneakers. Because sneakers, they are giving balance and to allow God to work. Hallelujah. Amen. I began to buy khakis. I'm not a fan of khakis. I began to buy, I love that because of that is 
So I just began to buy sneakers. I said, no one knew. Not in my family knew. Wisdom. Wisdom. But I'm the one who knew that God has told me to buy what? Now I start when I'm wearing shoes. No more shoes. Now I can walk easily. But the Lord knew that at that time, the shoes was a problem. Hallelujah. Amen. So he wanted to wake face and fix me. Pay attention to wisdom. Yes. I told you one time I was praying, the Lord told me this. Start eating onion. Don't argue with God. He knows your God. He's the best doctor. So I just begin to chop onions. <laughs> no one no, knew that why I was just chopping onions. But I chopped to, to, to chop them. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, when I chopped onion, there was some heat that was in my chest. It disappeared. The Lord needed the, the, need, needed the onion to work with it to fix me. Do you see what I'm talking about? Follow wisdom. Follow what? Yeah. After many times here, one time I was praying, the Lord told me, take avocado seed, boil it and drink that thing. I've never heard that. My friend, this is, this is poison. But I've never seen it in the medicine. I've never. I think I was the first one to hear it. Now I saw it all, like, all over. Pastors, uh, doctors are treating people of rheumatoid arthritis using avocado seed. But God is a, is a medical doctor. He knows your body. Hallelujah. He gave me that, that wisdom. That wisdom. Pay attention to the wisdom of God. Amen. That God is blessed in your heart. I told you one time that he told me you are lacking vitamin B. You are lacking, you are lacking vitamin B complex. So I went to the shop to buy vitamin B complex. I'm telling you, when I took one, my heart said, This is wrong. I took it. I went and threw it. And I just have a session of eating. Why can I have vitamin B complex? In vegetables, green stuff. Ah, ah. Then I, I began to eat more veg, more veg, more veg, more veg. I get more vitamins. Wisdom. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And also it is wisdom for you to take the Holy Communion every day. Or at least in a week. Treat as a cup for a cup. At least in a week. We do. So we are going to do this tonight. Amen. But at least also have your own personal time where you do the Holy Communion. Because it's God's wisdom to fix your body. Hallelujah. Amen. And to work and to service your body. But taking the Holy Communion is like taking your body for service. Though you take your cup for service. So tonight, you are coming to the service table. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, at the service table. Hallelujah. Amen. The word is servicing you. The communion is servicing you. Wisdom. 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 Yes. Wisdom. Amen. Wisdom. So pay attention to wisdom. Get me close with this. Number three is one to be wrong. Honor. Honor elders. And honor your spiritual elders. Elders, just put it, just put it in here. Honor your elders. Listen now, for those youngsters, you cannot live long if you don't respect your parents. I've seen some people who even hold their parents like this. I'll beat you. Hey, go and repent. Go and tell them. If it's your mom or your father, please forgive me. You are already digging your grave. You cannot touch your father or your mother in their clothes like this. You want to fight with them, beat them. You are in trouble. You are digging your grave yourself. A man that lives for longevity is to respect others. Okay. You know, my own mother, she called me elder. Do you know why? Because I respected them. My mother called me elder, Mukuba. That's in our, in our, in our, in our family. All the time, my mother called me Mukuba. My name is Respect. Because I respect my parents and they respect me as a man of God. They always told me I give them to my parents. Hallelujah. Amen. She give me respect as a, as a spiritual person. Though I'm a son. But when I'm preaching home, they will come. I'm laying hands on them praying for them. My parents. You can never live long if you don't respect your parents. Yeah. And in that respect, that two dimension. That is giving to them materially and also honoring them on your mouth. A lot of our generation are dying. And you know what one of the reasons? Dishonor. Let me just jump on it. Dishonor. Our generation, go to the graveyard, you are going to find a lot of people have died, I am 
old, old that people are not dying at all. You can find even in the world children doing it. Even somebody is old, old, you see. I don't, I, I, I don't know how are you, you can't read something like this. Good afternoon, auntie. You can somebody is this, this. I don't, I don't, you can change it. I don't, Mr. Wesley. I think Mr. Wesley is your, is, 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 is your, your age mate. I don't, I don't, Mr. Allen, you see somebody is very young. How are you, sir? Respect. For elders to give you long life, many children that don't respect their parents, they can't live long. Go to the grave. You find a lot of aged children. You want to argue with your father. Your father knows life than you know. You want to argue with your mother. She's been where you have been being. Listen and pay attention to wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. But what you know, what you know about life. You don't know life, relax. They know what you don't know. They have seen what you've never seen. When your parent is talking, don't be talking to Be quiet. Until they finish, listen to them. Hallelujah. You only disagree with your parents when they go against the word of God. And you only disagree with your parents when they go against the Holy Spirit. But you tell them in love too. Respect. Ephesians 6, 2 and 3 says this. Children, honor your parents in the Lord. Let's read this. I want to read it exactly. For 23 minutes, I won't put it. Ephesians 6, 3. 2 and, and, and 3. Ephesians 6, 2 and 3. So maybe you are a child, you've, met, you, you, you've already been called with your father or your mother. Go and say to things. Let's go and go, Mama. I'm sorry for what I did. I was very wrong. Please forgive me. That you are going to attract the mess of God. Ephesians 6, 2 and 3. Honor your father and your mother. Honor what? Honor, that means also give them materially. <laughs> something small. Anything that comes in my pocket all the time, I take some, something small and take to my parents. Not because they need it. It's a demand from the Lord. If your parents are not there, you can bless your, your, your spiritual parents or bless the people in your family. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So can you see? This is the only commandment with a promise. What's the promise number one? That it may be well with you. Hallelujah. When you honor your mother, no matter how short she is, she's your mother. Children, whether your father is short and now you are taller, you can say like this. <laughs> As long as it produces your body, you never produce your spirit. It came from God. It produces your body. Hallelujah. Amen. Make sure you respect and honor your father. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, it shall go well with you. Hallelujah. Amen. It shall go well. That means you shall, you shall succeed. Then number two, look at this. And that you may live a long life on the earth. Honor. Honor. Hallelujah. Amen. The last thing. If you want to live long, honor your father and your mother. Honor your pastor. Amen. Last thing. If you want to live long, control your mouth. Hmm? Control. Control. Listen. Whether you feel like dying, don't say, I, I'm dying. Never say that. That's how faith talks. Whether the pain is very strong, don't say, I have a pain. I have a pain. You have to say, no, 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 no. Pain can't stay here. I resist it. I, will, I resist you. 
When you do that, the Father will come and heal you. Hallelujah. Amen. Control your mouth. Because your mouth determines your future. Your mouth determines your health. Hallelujah. Amen. Your mouth determines your healing. Never ever confess what you are going through. Say what you want to say. Please, please. Put your hand, put your hand, put your mouth. Say my mouth. My mouth. You are my blessing. You are my case. Or you are my case. Your mouth can bless you, or your mouth can bless you. Control your mouth. And I'm going to close with this one. Three ways you can control your mouth. Three ways you can control your mouth. A. Talk only life. Three ways to control your mouth. Only talk life. Only. 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 Don't talk other things. Only talk life. Only talk what? Life. Only talk what? Life. Only talk what? Only talk what? Only. Don't talk about luck. Don't talk about poverty. Don't listen. Whether you are sleeping outside. Hey, don't say I'm 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 I'm, I'm poor. Listen. Whether you are sleeping outside on a mat, sleep there like you are sleeping in a 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 in that's how you come up in the name of Jesus. Amen. This issue of walking, feeling sorry for yourself, is just destroying you. Amen. Speak only life. Listen, Joel 3:10. Let the weak say, I am what? Strong. Do you see? You speak content what you're feeling. Let the weak say, I am strong. Don't say, I am weak. Ah, let the weak say, Amen. Amen. Lift your hand and say, by faith, say, I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. Say louder, I'm strong. I'm strong. Say again, I'm strong. Say again, I'm strong. My body is strong. My brain is strong. My legs are strong. My hands are strong. That verse, Mark 5, 36. Fear not, only believe. Only believe only. That means don't speak negative, only speak positive, only speak life. Amen. All the time. All the time. I say all the time. Amen. I say all the time. Amen. Don't say I have. I have TB. When you say I have, it means you possess it. Amen. You have to curse it in the body. Hallelujah. Amen. You are cursed, you can't stand this ball. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, how to control number A, number B, how to control your tongue. Don't gossip people. Amen. Amen. Hey, wave your hand. Say never. Don't gossip people. No, 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 no. Watch out how you talk about it. Especially fellow believers. If you want to live long, speak good about it. You know, they are dying. They are dying. They are dying. They are dying. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, whatever you want to be done to you, do it unto others. Amen. Amen. Speak good about people. If you speak good about people, you are speaking good about yourself. Amen. It's a principle. When Job prayed for his friend, the Lord healed him. Hallelujah.
and the other off and come and put it in. Praise God. Make sure that you don't talk bad about people. You don't talk bad about people. Yeah, you can take it. Any kind of person. Are we being blessed? Amen. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. From today. From today. I will mind my business. I will mind my business. Just come and put your offering in there. If I take the communion.